Now I've got some nice snow building up around, around the sides. And that's good for keeping the tent nice and secure and more insulated. There are a couple of areas that I want to leave uh, open. There's a vent around the back that I, I uh, just cleared. But overall, I gotta say, the tent did well. It's been here standing for about uh, three weeks and looks strong, looks really good. I've already got one anchor here and uh, I'm gonna tie down this tent real good. So many layers to this tent. It's amazing. That's why it's so warm. And you've got all these little little toggles and little latches and loops. But I can't do this because I got my glove on. Let's go. Get through. There we go. like that. Okay. I believe it just Velcro's in here. That Velcro means business. Right on, okay. I'm gonna get a fire going right away and then I'm gonna start bringing stuff in. Well, the birch trees around here don't have much to offer. I might have enough to start a fire with some really small splits, but there's a good chance I'm gonna have to use store-bought method. Oh, I found some. I should have enough. to do something I haven't done in a very long time and that's start a fire 
like a bushcrafter. I uh, I used to do it all the time when I first started out on YouTube because I wanted to keep up with all the those YouTube channels out there that uh, th that was the thing like two or three years ago starting a fire with uh, with a uh, a ferro rod making feather sticks using birch bark all that stuff is fun my stove is crooked So, I'm going to try. My thing with feather sticks is I'm not good with the pressure. I just don't know the proper pressure. The Joe Robinettes and the TA Outdoors of the world, those guys, I think they just really practice. Mine become messy. Let's see what happens. I gotta be honest with you guys, <laughs> the fire went out. I uh, I just didn't do it right. The birch was doing okay. I had my splits in there, turned my head for a second, looked back in, and it was out. So, I grabbed an extra flame, one of those little store-bought blocks that you can just light. They're not, you know, they. They don't have alcohol in them or anything like that, or gas. They're just like an all natural fire starter. So I grabbed one and I took a match and I, just, I started the fire. Listen to that sleeping bag. There's already a big temperature difference between outside and inside. I need to make sure this place is properly ventilated. Need some fresh air coming in because that stove is getting hot fast. This is definitely the hottest part of the tent up here. So it's really nice to have this net to keep everything Nice and warm and dry. I'll probably throw my socks up there tonight. It's good. So this tent has these bags that are pretty convenient. And I think what I'm gonna do is 
I'm gonna put some of my camera gear in this bag. So that way, I can just quickly grab stuff. Watch this draft. Now, the last time I was here, a lot of you wondered why I didn't take the temperature inside. So, I brought a thermometer and I'm gonna set it up. Some rope. I'm loving all these pouches. So good. Nothing special about that knot. Now, we're gonna measure the temperature in multiple places. I think the best place to measure the temperature right now is at the top. So you guys can see how hot the top of this tent gets. And I, I have this stove going pretty good right now. Not full blast, but pretty darn good. In fact, I'm gonna close it a bit. Um, Cause it gets, it gets so warm in here. Minus 35, 38, 40 outside, it doesn't matter. The temperature up here is ridiculous because this is a double wall tent. So let's see what it's like up top. Now this was also a cool idea that I got from you guys. So I've got a couple of bottles. Someone recommended that I take cotton balls, throw them down in, fill it with peppermint oil. And that will keep the rodents away. And there are mice around here. I know that for sure. Um, the, the tent that used to be here was riddled with them. Um, so I'm doing everything I can just to keep them at bay. Uh, I'm sure if they want to come in, they'll just come in. But if I can deter them from doing that, then why not? So I don't have any cotton balls, but I do have tissue. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stuff tissue down in here. Not like that, because that's not going to work. Like this. Yeah, that'll work. And I've got peppermint. This is the stuff that you would put in a diffuser at your house. You know, those, those like little fancy diffusers that you plug in, you put some water in them, you put the oil in, and it shoots out the steam, and your house smells like whatever oil you put in it. Oh, that's, that's where I got this. I don't know what's enough. Is that a lot? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to keep going. Does peppermint invite wolves? <laughs> There's lots of wolf tracks out there. There's some big tracks right by this tent. I saw them coming in, but that's normal. I wish this stuff would come out faster. Whatever, that's what we're going with. Hmm. 
There you go. I'll hang that around the tent. And then maybe I'll leave one inside when I go. So as you guys can see, I got these hooks. I put one right here. And I've got another one over there. And my plan is to just pull this tent out as much as I can. And I've got some sliders here. Take one out, just lay it right there where I can see it. And I think I'm just going to do a few of these tonight just for a little bit of extra security. Make sure that this tent doesn't go anywhere. Okay, so I'm just going to tie a knot that I can just quickly pull out. Leave myself a little loop there. Good. Current temperature at the top of the tent, almost 80 degrees Fahrenheit, almost 30 degrees Celsius. So, and it's it really does feel very comfortable right now. I've got that stove dialed in nicely. It's not outputting too much heat. So, it's nice. It's perfect in here. I'll take it all. Whoa. This is awesome. This is awesome. I'm going to try to figure out a really nice lighting system in here to hook up to my Jackery. Maybe some sort of like string lights that can go around all the hooks up top and then wire it down the side to my Jackery. Something really bright up there would be really cool. dark out now this is a this has been a really lovely weekend for me I spent Friday night out at my other tent that was my previous video to this one and then I just packed everything up and came over here now I got to go back there in a little bit and grab some wood I have some extra wood there that I'm gonna bring over this is not bad but I definitely need more That'll get me through the evening and maybe into the hours of the night when I'm sleeping. But, I mean, you, you can't have enough wood. It's the most important thing. It really is. Also, that stove boiled that kettle so fast. The last time I came here, I made craft dinner and hot dogs. The... Uh, the stove took a long time to boil the water and I was a bit concerned. I was thinking to myself, what am I doing wrong? I don't want to crank the stove too high because it's just going to get too hot in here. But I've got it at a really nice temperature. Oh, it's so lovely. And I just put that kettle on the back corner and I found, I could see red coming through the back corner. And all the, all the flame and all the heat gets sucked around the back and then gets pulled forward and out the chimney there's a baffle in there there's a gap it's almost like two different 
two different um, tops to this stove. And so a lot of the fire is sucked. Well, I mean, it's all sucked out the back. So that's where the significant amount of heat is. Also, this, this glass side, it's like a, I don't know if it's glass or ceramic or whatever it is. The heat that that gives off compared to the actual steel is ridiculous. I, I think it's like three or four times as hot. Because I can put my hand here and it's nice and hot. That's like putting my hand in the fire. Like right there, it's up against the coals is what it feels like. It's super hot right there. So that's lovely. That that warmth is pushing its way into the tent. And um, I was asked why I don't have the, the stove turned with the front facing out. If I did that, I literally would have the back end of this stove pushed into the tent and touching the tent. And when I've looked online at this specific tent, this is a UP5, and I do have the largest Caminus stove. Um, Caminus is the name of this type of stove. I got the biggest one, and every time I looked at pictures of, of this kind of combination, the stove is always turned sideways. And so the advantage is you've got this heat going to the middle of the tent as opposed to turning the stove and having the heat blast to the side walls. Also, you've got the back of the stove rubbing up against. I know this is protected here. This is like a heat shield, but still, who wants who wants their stove rubbing up against the tent, especially if the wind started swirling and this tent started moving a lot? Who knows if this part of the tent would come in contact? So it's going to be, I'm going to be coming out this way. I'm setting it up sideways and I feel pretty good about it. Also, there's glass on the other side, but I've got the heat shield over top of that. I could open it up. It would have an excessive amount of heat. It would be like this on the other side, and that would be so hot up against that side of the tent. I really don't see the purpose or the need to do that. Also, I don't want to damage this material here, which is not nylon, by the way. It's uh, much thicker, and I believe it's rip-proof. So if you're like to rip, if you're like to cut into it, and then you wanted to like rip it and pull it apart, it'd be very hard to do. storage here. I'm going to use it. At least I think that's what it is. Good load of wood. That should do the night. I'm not going to go crazy with it. Just keep it a nice temperature in here, and that should that should get me through to morning.
and you guys can see now at the top of the tent it's over 30 degrees in here almost uh, 90 degrees Fahrenheit and that's climbing like you can watch that climb look at that awesome red in the corner on that stove that tells you that I got it going pretty darn hot that's for sure it's just beautiful and I don't think I want to have my stove this red hot all the time um, but it, it is a really pretty color I gotta say so I've got this frying pan and it's really small and I salvaged it from the tent it's a bit rusty it's cast iron and I've got a steak now this thing is I have a feeling if I cook a steak on this the steak's gonna it's gonna make a mess it's gonna spray everywhere but I kind of want to use it I had thought about cooking outside but I don't want to use my wood for a fire outside. It would take a lot of wood to get the fire up to where it needs to be in order to cook out there. And I don't want to use it for that. I'm going to have to slow down that burn. She is hot, boys. She is hot. Oh. It's going to be good. This is the best thing in the world, being in here like this, doing this. Wow. Move the pan over to the corner. And it's even more intense, the heat. And I can see a splattering on the stove, but that's awesome. It's uh, giving it some character. And while I don't have the strongest sense of smell, I, I believe I can smell the butter. Oh man, does that ever look good. It's just gonna be meat, just meat. Oh baby. Yes, that's gonna be incredible. That is gonna be incredible. Where did I put that seasoning? Oh man. Okay. I'm ready to eat. Look at this thing. I'm going to eat it right out of this pan. Cast iron. And I might have overdone it a little bit because I'd let it stay in there for a while afterwards. Yeah, a little bit, but whatever. Look at that. Steaming beautifully. Mm. Yes. Anyway, this is it for now. I'm going to relax the rest of the evening. It's pretty late. And, uh, and hopefully I get through the night with a nice warm stove and a nice warm sleeping bag and uh, this tent feels great right now it really does and I'm looking forward to hitting that sack when the time comes but in, in the meantime I think I'm just gonna sit back and maybe watch a documentary or something it's what I like to do when I come out here and I have a pretty good signal tonight so I might even be able to watch uh, something on YouTube um, so yeah See you guys in the morning. Guys, we are almost at 50 degrees Celsius. 45, it's about 110 Fahrenheit. 
it is bonkers hot in here so I gotta really turn it down anyway I was uh, getting ready to go to bed there I just finished supper and I thought I was done with the camera but I had to show you guys this The stove did amazingly well last night. Oh, look at all this wood I have left. <laughs> it's, you can slow it right down and it still goes off good heat. And I really just wanted to keep the chill out of the tent. And my sleeping bag was so toasty. It was really nice. I woke up at one point. Um, 6 a.m. and it was down like it was it was next to nothing opened it up put in a few pieces and uh, I opened it up a bit too much because I could I could feel a chill in the tent so I opened it up pretty good and then it's nine o'clock now I woke up at about 8 30 it was like <laughs> really hot it was suffocatingly hot in here I just let it go too hot like overnight you just have to close it down a bit and it'll do its job it really will if you have a warm sleeping bag you're gonna be perfectly fine in this tent and I uh, I find that it's not drafty I have this little draft system here open and there is cold air rushing right by my hand here There's a little flap that you lift up here and a little flap on the outside and the air is just rushing in and I've got a little bit of the front door cracked open in the bottom too so there's fresh cold air coming through and I have the screens um, I have the windows open except for the screens so there is air coming through there but it's not a drafty tent my other tent I mean I put that together with no idea of what I was doing no knowledge of what I was doing and um, there's there's definitely some um, some draftiness in that tent. I still love it. It's it's my it's my favorite thing in the world, really favorite place to go. But uh, yeah, it's uh, being in here and being in the sleeping bag and not having all these this cold air rushing down through your you know by your neck or by your feet or whatever. It just seems really solid and and the, the heat is nicely distributed. I move the thermometer down from the ceiling. I took it down and put it here because this is like, it seems like a fair place to calculate the overall temperature in the tent. Up high, it's gonna be the hottest. Down low, it's gonna be the coldest. This is right in the middle of the tent and you guys can see, let me zoom in there. It's like almost 20 degrees. It's like 65 Fahrenheit, almost 20 Celsius. And look, it's warming up to minus 32 today. <laughs> right on. It's going to be super warm. I don't know if you guys can see these. These are the liners for my winter boots. And I always recommend getting winter boots where the liners can come out. A, you can take the liners out and you can dry them off and warm them up, so that's an advantage. And B, you can take them off and you can use them as like little slippers. And these are really warm in here right now. There's an insulated floor underneath of this that does come from uh, the Russian bear market where I got this tent from. And um, I slid it on underneath. This is just a thin layer and underneath is another uh, double layered floor. And it, you, it's actually nice and toasty. But with these on, 
it's double toasty. Oh yeah. It can get pretty dry in here. So I've got some water in here and I'm just letting it simmer. A nice low boil and it uh, brings up the humidity level quite a bit. Last night the humidity level was almost down to, to nothing. I have a reader on my um, thermometer and I was down below 10% uh, humidity and that's considered very dry. Uh, so right now I'm almost at 30% humidity and that's, uh, that's almost normal. So that's what you want. I could definitely feel it last night. It was getting super dry in here. Anyway, one of my favorite things to do in this tent is have my back to this stove. Oh, I just love it. It warms up so nicely. I think I'm going to move this forward just a bit here. Yeah. And so, I sit like this, and the, the stove warms up my back so nicely. It's just wonderful. And this has been a very pleasant morning. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and I just think to myself, I'm ready to go back and I just get everything on the go. But this morning I'm taking my time. Stayed in bed a little bit longer than normal because it was so cozy in there. The first trip out to this tent was really fun and it was an excellent challenge for me because I was putting it up near the shortest day of the year and uh, it was freezing. It was minus 37 when I woke up. I mean today's minus 33 and that's still very cold. It's very cold. If this was late November right now, minus 33, I would say it was brutally cold. But now that I've been through minus 39, minus 40, minus 33 actually feels decent. <laughs> I have to say it feels a lot warmer than what it's been over the last month or so. So yeah, this, uh, that trip was extreme. This trip, not so extreme. I'm set up, I show up, I get the fire going, I get myself nice and comfortable, I eat some food, I do a couple of projects, I have a comfortable sleep. Wonderful trip, it really was. And a part of me um, didn't wanna do it, I'll be honest. I, uh, I came from my other tent yesterday to, to shoot a whole separate video here. Um, and a part of me just wanted to go home yesterday after um, going to the tent and spending 24 hours there. But here we are, you know, it's a day later and I feel great and I'm so glad I did it. And that's a big part of it. You know, sometimes you just don't feel like doing something. And then when you get out there and you do it and you put yourself to the test a little bit, the feeling is, is phenomenal. And uh, that's, what, that's a big reason why I do this stuff. So anyway. I'm going to enjoy this coffee and I'm going to enjoy the rest of my morning. My snowmobile should be ready to start here in about 20 minutes and uh, I'll, I'll slowly chip away at packing up and then I'm going to go home and back to society and the real world. Anyway, I hope you guys liked this video. I had a really good time. If you did like it, please hit the like button. That would be great. And if you haven't subscribed already and you're thinking about it, now's the time. Now's the time to do it. Hit the notification bell all that stuff. I say it at the end of my videos now. Um, uh, I feel like it's a good time to say it because if you've stuck around to this point, then I feel like there's a good chance you, you will like it and you will subscribe. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll be back really soon.